Hey everyone, this is a revision video about measurement of length and time. I hope it will be helpful for you. Before starting the lecture, I would like you to subscribe to my channel, Physic Bus. This is my first video about IGCSE physics and I want to add new videos frequently. To support me, please subscribe my channel and like this video. Ok, let's start. So, what is length basically? It is the measurement of distance, or more simply, it is a physical quantity which tells us how far objects are. Its SI unit is meter. We can't really use a single instrument to measure lengths of all magnitudes, so the instrument used depends on the magnitude of length to be measured. Every instrument has different precision and range. The question is what is precision and what is range? Precision is simply the smallest unit, I mean minimum length, an instrument can measure. Like the ruler you see on the screen, measures at least 0.1 cm or 1 mm. Range is the maximum length an, in an instrument can measure. This ruler can measure a maximum of 20 cm. Hence, it is its range. While taking readings, however, we might note it incorrectly due to parallax error, which can occur due to the wrong position of our eye. To avoid this, we must position our eye directly above the reading to be measured, like this. The instruments used are meter rule, measuring tape, vernier caliper, micrometer screw gauge. We are familiar, we are all familiar with meter rule and measuring tape. A meter rule can measure the length within one meter only, while measuring tape can be used for lengths longer than a meter. A length of 2 and a half meters, for instance. Its precision is 0.1 centimeters. Okay, so coming to the vernier calipers, here's how it looks like. Vernier calipers are actually used to measure smaller lengths to acquire a greater accuracy, as its precision is 0.01 centimeter, I mean 0.1 millimeter. The inside jaws shown are used to measure the internal diameters of objects while the outside jaws are to measure the external diameter. The vernier caliper have a main scale and a sliding vernier scale. Now we are going to learn how exactly measurements are taken using vernier calipers. Look at the zero on the vernier scale. Read the main scale just to the left of the zero. This tells you the length in millimeters. This 24 millimeter in our example. Now, look at the vernier scale. Find the point where one of the markings is exactly aligned with one of the markings on the main scale. Read the value on the vernier scale. This tells you the fraction of millimeter that you must add to the main scale reading. So, the result in our example is 24 plus 0.46 is equal to 24.46 millimeters. Ok, here's how micrometers look like. To measure even smaller lens, micrometer is used as it has an even smaller precision. I mean 0.001 cm or 0.01 mm. Its range is less than 2 cm. The object whose diameter is to be measured is placed between anvil and spindle. The ratchet, which is a kind of knob, is turned to tighten spindle until a tick is heard. So now the thing is, what do we do after this? It's simple. What is the maximum reading visible on sleeve? It's 15.5 mm and on the thimble scale we determine this by looking at the mark which coincides with the line on sleeve called datum line it is 0.25 mm Finally, we'll add up to two readings and the answer is 
15.75 millimeters. Okay, now how we can measure volume? For liquids, measuring cylinders can be used. To perform an accurate reading, you must look at the scale horizontally and read the level of the bottom of the meniscus. For solids, there are two approaches to measuring volumes, depending on whether or not the shape is regular. For a regular shaped solid objects, you can use the mathematical formulas to calculate the volume of the objects. For non-regular shaped objects, we use a method called water displacement. Put the object in a measured amount of water and measure how much the water rises on a graduated cylinder. The difference is the volume of the object. For measurement of time, stop clocks and stop words can be used. You may come across two types of timing device. An analog clock is like a traditional clock whose hands round the clock's face. And digital clock is one that gives a direct reading of the time in numerals. For example, a digital stopwatch might show a time 12.32 seconds. Okay, suppose you have to measure the thickness of a sheet of paper. The thing that you're trying to measure is so small that it will be very difficult to get an accurate answer. If, however, you measure the thickness of 100 sheets of paper, you can do so much more accurately, dividing your answer by 100 will then give an accurate figure for the thickness of one sheet. This process of taking a reading of a large number of values and then dividing by that number is a good way of getting accurate values for small figures, including for example the time period of a pendulum. For example, measure the time taken for 10 swings and then divide that time by 10. Ok, this is the end of chapter 1. I hope this video will helpful for you. To support me, please do not forget to subscribe my channel, Physic Buzz.